The sound of a wire. A 5 meter 0 0.732 kilograms wire is used to support two uniform 235 newton posts of equal length. So these are the posts and they make an angle 57 degrees with the horizontal and there are pivot points at the end points. Assume that the wire is essentially horizontal and that the speed of sound is 344 meters per second. A strong wind is blowing, causing the wire to vibrate in its fifth overtone. What are the frequency and wavelength of the sound this wire produces? So if I look at this setup here, I see that I have a uniform uh, bar. There is the weight at the center, so that's the center of mass. There will be a tension developing on the wire and due to the symmetry of the problem, I can see that the tensions will be the same. The angle with the horizontal is 57 degrees. There will be a contact force which will have a vertical and horizontal component at the pivot points. And the length of the uh, bar I'm going to call L here. Okay, so I have started with identifying all the forces. So let's first identify all the forces. So there has to be a tension on the wire, T, the tension on the wire. There will be mg, which is weight of the wire. You can see here, uh, this is a uniform wire, so it will be at the center. Center of mass is here, so mg, weight of the wire. F, now F is the weight of the uniform post. So you can see here, it's the... Uh, pointing from the center of mass right in the middle, F is equal to 235 Newton. That is the weight of uh, the post. There will be contact forces, a normal force and a horizontal force developing at the pivot points. So N and H are vertical and horizontal components, contact force, contact forces on the pivot point where these uh, posts are touching the ground. Okay, now we have an equilibrium situation. So at equilibrium, we're going to have the net force on the y-axis equal to zero. So where is the y-axis? This is the y-axis, vertical axis. X-axis is the horizontal axis and z-axis is coming out towards us. So if I write the net force on the y-axis, I have two times N, the normal force, contact forces, minus two times F minus Mg, equals to zero. So if I consider this whole thing as one object, there are two N force, uh, contact forces pointing up, two F pointing down and MG pointing down. So this should add up to zero. If I write the net force on the X axis, then I have the horizontal forces canceling the tension. So they are also adding up to zero. So if I isolate one post, so isolate one post, I can see that I have the pivot point here. Uh, there is the weight of the post, 235 newtons pointing down from the center and the tension acting to the right uh, on the horizontal wire. So if I calculate the torque with respect to this pivot point, then I will be eliminating the effect of contact forces. So the net torque uh, with respect to the pivot point is equal to uh, 
L over 2, the perpendicular distance between F and the pivot point, that is this distance here, this is L over 2, uh, multiplied by the perpendicular component of this force, which is, uh, we can see here, this is 57 degrees, and that is 57 degrees, so this is 57 degrees here. So that is F times cosine 57. Now R cross F, we go from the uh, pivot point to the application point of the force. So this is our R vector. R cross with F gives us a vector coming out towards us. So it's in K hat direction. On the other hand, we have a distance L uh, with respect to the application point of the tension and the perpendicular component of tension is T sine 57. So we will have a T L times T sine 57 and for this one we will see that if this is our r vector uh, so let's call this r1 this is r1 this is r2 so this is basically r1 cross with f this is now r2 cross with uh, t and uh, R2 cross with T gives us a vector, using the right-hand rule, pointing into the uh, page, so it's in minus k hat direction. And these torques should add up to zero. So the L's will cancel here, and we will find that the tension T on the wire is F cosine 57 divided by uh, 2 sine 57. Okay, so F cosine 57 over 2 divided by sine 57. So this is basically F, the weight of the post, divided by 2 cotangent 57. So if we calculate this tension, tension is equal to 235 newtons, the weight of the post, divided by 2, cotangent 57, 0 0.649. So this gives us 76.3 newtons as the tension on the wire. The mass per unit length, mu, is m divided by l, the length of the wire. The mass was given as 0 0.732 kilograms. So it is 0.732 divided by the length of the wire, which is 5 meters. So divided by 5, uh, the answer is 0 0.146 kilograms per meter as the mass per unit length. So we can calculate the propagation speed of sinusoidal waves on this wire to be square root of tension divided by mu so it's going to be 76.3 divided by 0 0.146 square root and the answer would be 22.9 meters per second now what are the standing wave boundary conditions so for standing waves forming on this wire the boundary condition is we have to start with a fixed end a note and end with a note so we're looking for the fifth overtone fifth overtone means it's the sixth harmonic so fundamental is the first harmonic second harmonic is the first overtone so let's find the fifth harmonic using this a boundary condition, the sixth overtone, the fifth harmonic would have node, anti-node, node, that's the fundamental, anti-node, node, second harmonic, anti-node, node, third harmonic, anti-node, node, fourth harmonic, anti-node, node, fifth harmonic. So we have from node anti-node, anti-node, uh, anti-node, node, that's one wavelength. And then we have node, anti-node, node, anti-node, node, anti -node, node uh, 
uh, another uh, wavelength here. So um, this is the fundamental, this is the second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic and fifth harmonic. And uh, this gives us finally uh, lambda over two. Uh, so this is going to be our lambda over two. So let's double check fundamental first harmo uh, harmonic second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic. So we have to go one more. Okay. So uh, anti-node node, that's the fifth harmonic. So that would be another lambda. So once again, node, anti-node, node, fundamental. Node, anti-node, node, anti-node, anti -node, node, second harmonic. And third harmonic, uh, so fundamental, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, and fifth harmonic. Okay, so we have three wavelengths. So L is equal to three times the wavelength on the wire lambda W. So that would be equal to uh, wavelength is L divided by uh, three where L was five, so it is five divided by three meters. So what I'm calling lambda W is the wavelength of the standing waves on the wire. So the corresponding frequency F uh, would be uh, the propagation speed V divided by the wavelength on the wire, 22.9 meters per second divided by uh, the wavelength, which is 5 over 3. So this gives us for the frequency F 13.7 hertz. So this is the frequency of the uh, sinusoidal waves that would be created on the wire. But we would like to know frequency and wavelength of the sound this wire will produce. So uh, we conclude that the wire produces uh, sound waves with frequency Thirteen point seven hertz. So that would be the frequency of the sinusoidal waves. The speed of sound is the wavelength multiplied by the frequency. The speed of sound is given as three hundred forty-four meters per second, thirteen point seven hertz times lambda. Therefore, V S the speed of sound in air. Uh, lambda would be, be 25.1 meters. Okay, so the frequency of the sound generated will be 13.7 hertz and the wavelength will be 25.1 meters. So let's see what we did here. We have a, a wire that is stretched between two posts um, they are uh, uniform posts, 235 newtons each. We're given the mass and length of the wire. And uh, we're, we're producing standing waves on this wire. A strong wind blows. It vibrates in the fifth overtone, which is uh, the sixth harmonic. So the uh, second harmonic is the first overtone. The frequency and wavelength of the sound this wire produces is what we are after. So first we identify the forces acting on it. And because we have contact forces here uh, at the pivot point, we should take the torque with respect to this pivot point so that we eliminate these contact force uh, forces in our equations. And we have F, the weight of the post and tension on the uh, wire acting on this post. 
So uh, if you write the equilibrium condition, you, you can see that the horizontal and uh, vertical forces, contact forces, are there to balance the net uh, vertical force and horizontal force on the wire, which is basically balancing the tension and the weight, the total weight of the posts and the wire. When we isolate one post and we take torque with respect to this pivot point, uh, R1 cross with F gives us the torque L over 2 F cosine 57 in k hat direction. R2 cross with T gives us L multiplied with T sine 57 in uh, minus k hat direction using the right hand rule. So we find the tension uh, 76.3 newtons. Mass per unit length, mass divided by the length is mu. Square root T over mu gives us the propagation speed of the wires. Now it says we are in the fifth overtone, sixth harmonic. Uh, and remember that the wavelength lambda n for uh, this boundary condition is 2L divided by n. If we're in the sixth harmonic, it would be 10 divided by 6 or 5 over 3 meters, which I have done explicitly here, counting uh, the fifth harmonic. Node, anti-node, node fundamental anti-node node second harmonic, anti-node node third harmonic, anti-node node fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, and sixth harmonic. And the frequency is the propagation speed divided by the wavelength of the standing waves on the wire, which we have found to be L over 3, 5 over 3 meters. So we find the frequency of the oscillations, 13.7 hertz. So when the wire is vibrating at this frequency, it's producing sound waves with the same frequency, 13.7 hertz, but the sound waves propagate with a speed 344 meters per second. So F times lambda is 344, so we can calculate the wavelength to be 25.1 meters.